Speculation is rampant as to why the United States has detained without charge Press TV anchor and U.S. citizen Marzia Hashimi. Her family says she was arrested at St. Louis Airport and transferred to a detention center in Washington, D.C. No one knows why. Her employer, an Iranian state-funded broadcaster, says she's being mistreated in detention, having her hijab removed and offered non-halal food. Iran's foreign minister says her arrest is political and she should be released. Well, with more on this, I'm joined in Lahore by Marzia's former colleague and ex-Press TV anchor, Kaniz Fatima. In Philadelphia is the co-founder of the conservative Tea Party movement in the U.S., Michael Johns. And finally, in Tehran, we have Iranian affairs analyst Said Mustafa Hoshchesham. I thank you all for joining us. Kaniz, are you alarmed by U.S. authorities picking up Marzia? I am alarmed, um, although Maris had always spoken about how every time she'd gone to the U.S., and uh, let's not forget she would visit uh, at least once a year uh, to meet with her family, etc., uh, being a U.S. citizen. She, she did say that she faced harassment at airport authorities by the TSA agents with extra checking, interrogation. Sometimes she would have to miss her flights because of these interrogations and this kind of harassment. And she had sort of spoken about how this may escalate in the future. However, none of us were expecting something like this to happen. And so when we received the news, we were very shocked about it and, of course, outraged. The treatment that she had described, how she's been shackled and treated like a criminal, despite the fact that she hasn't been charged with a crime yet or those charges haven't been announced, uh, makes it all the more outrageous. And add to the fact that uh, after speaking to her son, I've... Uh, come to realize that they're holding her under uh, the material witness statute, mm. which means that they're not charging her with anything right now, as far as we know. Uh, and this wit uh, material witness statute has been used in the past, post 9-11, to hold suspects by U.S. authorities indefinitely without charge. Um, and that concerns me a right. lot as a journalist and as a personal friend of Marisia. Right, yes. So material witness, that's a possibility. That's from her son. We still haven't heard from the feds or any other U.S. authorities, so we just don't know. Michael Johns, from everything you've heard thus far, has the behavior by U.S. authorities been justified? Well, it's an unusual set of circumstances in the sense that a material uh, witness in the U.S. would traditionally be issued a subpoena and required to appear before court when you have, uh, in this case, a citizen that is predominantly a resident of Iran and there's a travel ban and concerns about her appearance, it re might require and is in fact permitted a different set of circumstances. What is not permitted is any uh, lengthy detention uh, without an explanation or an issuance of charges. Um, and I would suspect if the issue here is simply one of her providing testimony to this grand jury that presumably has been impaneled in Washington, D.C., uh, she would provide her testimony and provided that she's not a person of interest or a criminal suspect would be um, authorized to leave. If she is, in fact, a material, more than a material witness and actually that there is uh, uh, criminal charges, those two would have to be uh, presented to her very quickly under U.S. due process law. And I guess the most important point is I'm a little concerned with some of the reporting and commentary that I've seen globally that sort of suggests that there's a political dimension mm -hmm. to this or that she's being treated differently or unfairly. The U.S. has one of the greatest rules of law in the entire world. Our processes are very straightforward. And our judiciary, I think, as most know, is completely separate from the administrative branch of government. So her process will be one of, uh, according to the rule of law, and uh, treated, and she will be, in fact, treated very fairly. Mustafa Hoshchesham, she'll be treated family. She's not a political prisoner. Hello, and uh, thanks for having me. And uh, many thanks to TRT for covering the story. And also hello to Kenny's on the other side of the world. Well, as a matter of fact, I, uh, it's no secret that her uh, detention without any explanation uh, is a um, material breach of uh, human rights, of uh, freedom of expression, and freedom of the press. Uh, uh, she's been detained, uh, apparently, because uh, she thinks different uh, from uh, the U.S. hostile policies towards Iran. There is no explanation on her arrest, and as uh, her son has stated, 
uh, uh, apparently uh, she's been held uh, in jail even uh, as a material witness and she's being treated very harshly. Um, we all know that this is a violation of human rights, uh, but uh, from, uh, you know, an administration that has ignored in practice, I mean, uh, any, uh, um, I mean, exercising any kind of punitive measures against uh, the Saudi regime that has maimed, tortured, and killed uh, uh, journalist Jamal Khashoggi, you may not expect them to be much different from uh, the Saudi treatment when it comes into practice, when it comes to, you know, free press. Okay, they but, are doing okay, double but standards. Mustafa, when it comes to Iran, certainly there's, they, there's uh, a lot of blame know, to go around. Uh, certainly, crying you're, out about human rights. You're mentioning, but, you're mentioning the Americans, you're mentioning the Saudis. There's a long list of Iranian Americans that have been arrested by the Iranians without charge. Some of them had spying charges slapped on them. Some of them disappeared. I can, I can give you the list. I've got a whole list of their names here. So I think by comparison, Iran's hardly one to talk for, for many reasons when we look at this. I just want to bring Kaniz in and pick up on one of the points you made, Mustafa. You said this is about freedom of speech and freedom of the press. So, Kaniz, you worked within the system at Press TV. Might it be that U.S. authorities have arrested her because of the work she does at Press TV? Might that be the case? Well, uh, it's hard to speculate at the moment, and we're going to have to wait and see how that unfolds and how U.S. authorities explain themselves. But at the same time, for a journalist to work for a news outlet uh, that is based in Iran or based in Turkey or based in Qatar is outrageous. This is a journalist that we're talking about who is reporting on issues in a way that the U.S. government may or may not agree. But does that make her uh, a, a pawn, a political pawn that U.S. authorities can use to pressure Iran or to change uh, policies within Iran? That is something I think we should all take um, issue with because if that is how journalists are going to be treated in the U.S., then we have a big problem. Michael Johns, if, and again, there's a lot of ifs here and there's a lot of speculation, right? So let's put any other speculation aside and let's assume there is an angle in this thread that's related to the work she does for Iran's state-funded broadcaster. Would that be clamping down on freedom of the press? Yeah, I think it's important to say that just like we would not uh, single journalists out for a criminal prosecution, the fact that you're a journalist doesn't inoculate you from a criminal process. And just because there has not been a public statement from federal authorities regarding her detention yet, which I suspect actually will be forthcoming, does not mean that she hasn't been fully advised and that her family has not in turn been fully advised of the basis for her detention. Uh, that, in all probability, is the reason that we're aware that uh, she is being summoned as a material witness in this grand jury case. Uh, there is zero reason to believe she's being held based on her reporting, even though I'm sure there are many issues that could be taken with that. Mm -hmm. Press TV, as I recall, was labeled by the Anti-Defamation League as one of the greatest dispensers of conspiratorial anti-Semitic uh, information in the world a few years back. But that is not a crime, necessarily. Uh, this likely is unrelated to her reporting and, uh, and her, her rights under U.S. law will be fully protected. Right. But, Michael Johns, um, I mean, you, you, and, you keep on you know, saying, and no sorry, sorry to interrupt you, you keep on saying that it's a higher standard Certainly, you, you keep on saying there's zero reason to doubt the sanctity of the U.S. justice system. But, you know, post 9-11, there are scores of examples. Just like I told Mustafa Hosheshim, there's scores of examples of the Iranians banging up people um, on spy charges and otherwise. We talk of extraordinary renditions. We talk of people like Sami al Hajj, who worked for Al Jazeera, who spent seven years in Guantanamo Bay without charge or trial. People have a context and a reason for knowing that sometimes the U.S. paranoid net of justice snaps up whoever it doesn't like within its geopolitical enemies. Well, the Guantanamo process was one that was associated with uh, rule of law related to a global war on terrorism. So in, in essence, it was more an extension of war than it was uh, a judiciary process. She is now part of a federal judiciary process that has long-standing uh, 
set of standards that are rigidly adhered to and overseen um, and will be, you know, afforded all of her rights, and including if she is, in fact, criminally charged, which no reason to believe she will be, she would be afforded complete due process, including a right to counsel, including a right to uh, potentially appeal the bail and, and all of that uh, nature. But the issue of her being in her, of what precisely has happened here is something that has almost certainly been communicated to her. And if it is an issue of providing testimony in a grand, in a, in a, in a panel grand jury case, she likely will be providing that testimony very quickly, meaning you won't see a lengthy detention until such time as that uh, uh, grand jury is um, completed. Mustafa Hoshchesham, sitting in Tehran. And I believe her children also have been, so, oh, by the way, so, I believe her, ch her children also, I believe, have been issued federal subpoenas right. yeah. to appear in this grand jury yeah. process. Yes, her, her kids uh, subpoenaed so you have to appear in, before the grand jury. At least three right. material witnesses. Right, yes, yeah, certainly. Kids subpoenaed to appear before the grand jury. That's what we're hearing. But a lot of this is from Facebook and from people sharing messages from the kids, from their social media accounts. Nothing official yet. Mustafa Hosh Chesham, is there anything that you heard from Michael Johns, who's a staunch believer in the system, that encourages you that Merzia will get a fair hearing? and that she'll be okay. Let me uh, present you with my uh, assessment of this story. This is not a single case. This is not Marzia Hashemi. Uh, what I see is uh, in the strategic context of Iran and the United States confrontation, the U.S. has you know, declared an open confrontation with Iran uh, in, that includes uh, numerous measures in areas of hard, semi-hard, and soft war, uh, war uh, uh, warfare. And uh, uh, that includes also uh, silencing Iranian media outlets uh, uh, as a part of uh, the alternative media that are presenting a different image and picture of Iran. You know, the Board of News Directors in the United States, it receives a funding of $661 million. It operates under the Congress, but it received the funding and the budget through the State Department. The main task of this Board of Directors uh, that's in charge of the VOA, Radio Liberty, Radio Farda, and others, is fighting off the influence of opponent states like Russia, uh, uh, RT, uh, the Russian media, the Chinese media, and Iranian media, Al Jazeera and probably TRT, and uh, th this, this is their main task, to silence Iranian media, uh, to uh, eventually isolate, alienate uh, Iran in order to present their own picture of Iran. That's why they've been pre pressing a lot of uh, uh, press TV. Uh, they've uh, been trying to sanction press TV to limit its scope of activities. They have shut down hundreds of uh, media outlets, Twitter and Facebook pages that belong not just to political activists or journalists, but also to Iranian normal Understood. citizens Understood. and uh, average citizens in here. They've been filtering a number of media outlets, okay. English media outlets Mustafa of Hashish. the Islamic Republic. And I don't know if you're short of time or not, we are. but this is part of the FDD plan for sanctioning four Iranian media outlets that includes Press TV. And that plan has been admitted by the FDD okay. and the White House. Well, I hope you'll all try and join us again when we have more information from U.S. authorities about the fate of Merzia. But unfortunately, we're out of time right now. And I thank you all for joining us here on the Newsmakers.